Hi, hope you're a great day. You're watching JG Entertainment, and for this video, I'm be going over Obi Wan Kenobi top ten scenes. Now that season one's all wrapped up and everything, I've had a week to, to kind of think about everything to truly really, like put him in the spot and everything. Because I really was like, oh, where should I put this? Where should I put that? Now that I have a week to think about it and everything, I've put him on like a list, and I'm actually very happy with this list. So yeah, I'm be going over the top ten scenes from Obi Wan Kenobi along with two honorable mentions that I couldn't fit into the top ten. But yeah, I think it's gonna be a really good list. It's gonna be a spoiler talk of Obi Wan Kenobi season one. So if you haven't seen it, then don't watch this video because I'm gonna spoil anything for you. But yeah, let's get started with this discussion. So yeah, first of all, my first honorable mention that I'm going to go with is Riva told, reveals the truth about her to Obi-Wan, where she kind of tells her that, yeah, I was a youngling, this and that. I think that makes it for a really cool scene, you know what I mean? Especially since we see some of the flashbacks to him and Christensen, like kind of like slashing kids. That was like really, really cool. And yeah, I think Riva revealing the truth uh, about her, that like, she's actually a youngling and kind of giving it that plot twist, made her a way more interesting character than I thought she was before. Um, So yeah, that was really cool. And it kind of added more tension towards the episode and everything. And overall, I thought it was a really, really cool twist. So yeah, I was like, I'm all in favor for this. This was awesome, and I thought it really, really improved his character in my opinion. The other honorable mention that I have is that Bader kills everyone while walking in episode 3 whenever he's kind of looking for Obi-Wan and like he's walking and like everybody in the village is kind of hiding and then he takes out the kid and like snaps his neck and all that type of stuff. All that was amazing. Like that was a really cool scene. Unfortunately, it was like really, really short, which is why it just didn't fit my top 10. But if I could have added it to my top 10, if there was like number 11 here, that would be number 11. It was an amazing scene. Bader truly showed that he was super powerful. So yeah, go Bader. That was such a cool scene, killing the kid, killing the mom, all that type of stuff. It was just awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, cool Bader, super powerful and super evil. All right, now we're on to my actual top 10. And number 10, uh, Dark Vader burns all one in episode three. And that scene is whenever he's like, what are you? And he's like, I am what you made me. And then he like puts the thing, the coal, and then he like puts his lightsaber and starts a fire and then like force sits him and then like puts him in the fire. That was pretty cool. I think the idea and the concept behind it is super cool since obviously Obi-Wan kind of burnt Vader and uh, back in Mustafar. So I think that's a really cool idea to just have it. However, unfortunately, I feel like um, the execution for this wasn't amazing. I didn't feel like the directing was there. The lighting was very off. I could barely see it on my TV screen with the brightest that I could, the brightest setting that I had. So in general, I didn't feel like the execution was all that amazing. But I think that the actual content of it was really cool to kind of burn Obi Wan and make him suffer just the way that he kind of made Anakin suffer whenever he was running to Darth Vader and that fight at Mustafar. I think that's a really cool thing, and he really did feel pain. So I did think that was super awesome. So I really liked the concept behind it. I just wish that it was executed better. So yeah, that's why it's my number ten. All right, moving on to my number nine. And number nine is the opening scene of Obi Wan Kenobi as the, the show in general, and that's going to be the opening scene with Order sixty six. Uh, whenever like the Jedi's are like training with the Padawan, and then, like uh, they start like sh the clone troopers try to shoot the Jedi, and uh, she starts like dash blocking them and everything. And it's like this really cool one shot type of action scene. And it cuts with his switches room and everything. I thought it was a super cool scene, especially whenever like the Jedi finally dies, but she's able to kill the clone troopers. And you see all the kids like start running and then like the camera like backs off and it's like all the Jedi's fighting the clone troopers around them and everything. That's a super cool scene and it's such a great way to set up the tone for the show. Like or it was Order 66. That's the last thing that was super impactful to everyone's life. And it was super awesome. I, I really think that was super, super cool. Um, any scene with Order 66 is automatically like up there because it's such an amazing kind of like uh, storytelling and such an amazing point in Star Wars uh, history. You know, it's like, oh, this, is, see, this part is so crucial to Star Wars and it's always so heartbreaking to see. And this definitely did not fall short. It was such a cool scene to start with and I absolutely loved it. So yeah, great stuff. All right, moving on to number eight. And my number eight spot is going to be Riva and Owen talking about whether she's become Darth Vader whenever she returns Luke to Uncle Owen and, and his wife, obviously. And then she kind of like does their crying. And I think the actor did an amazing, amazing job. I kind of remember her name, but I don't want to mess it up, so I'm just going to put it right here. Moses Ingram, if I'm right, but just in case I got it wrong, I'm going to put it right here. But yeah, um, she she did an amazing job acting that scene. Whenever she's like crying, you really feel her pain. I was like, wow, she really is making me feel that pain. Like, it's really, really good. Um, like, I really, really felt that. And she was like, really like, I have felt them. You know, I felt the younglings, I felt them. Um, and then Obi Wan was like, "You didn't fall them. You gave them peace." So that was super, super cool. Like the, the writing in that scene was super awesome. I was like, "That's that's really deep stuff." You know, I think that's that that really fits the narrative. And obviously, you would want revenge when you see like all your friends that were little kids killed. Obviously, you want revenge for that. Like, of course you would. You know what I mean? So I think that that the whole arc kind of came full circle here. And the Kevin at least are open ended, where it's like uh, she kind of throws a lightsaber. And she doesn't want to be that anymore. She's going to be something different. And I think that I really like that arc. Like I said, Riva wasn't my favorite character from the start. I didn't hate her either. Like, I wasn't, like, a hater of her. But I wasn't like, oh, she's, like, cool. I was like, yeah, she's okay. But once they gave her that twist of her, like, being a, a youngling. And she's the one that she wants to go for Darth Vader and everything. I thought it made her a lot more compelling. And this scene here is, like, I think the end, the perfect ending to her arc. Where she's kind of like, oh, 
I've basically become, I can't do that anymore. Um, she kind of finds peace and not finding revenge anymore, and all type of stuff. I think that's great. I think that's some really deep stuff, and I think the writing was really cool for that. So yeah, that's why it's my number eight uh, spot. Now moving on to my number seven spot, and that is number seven, and that is going to be Terra Sacrifice. And she's the she's the rebel girl, the one that was that one that helped Kenobi and and um, Leia. And I thought that was really good. I think they had some. I thought, I thought her sacrifice was really good. Not just her sacrifice, but also the robot. Oh, the robot was so cute and also like super awesome. Um, I couldn't believe he died. I was so sad. But her sacrifice was really good, especially as earlier in episode five, she had told her us uh, her backstory about why she's doing this, how, how she kind of like rounded up all these people, and then the Inquisitors just killed them all, including like four kids, I think it was. And from there on, she decided to hunt Inquisitors. I think that's super deep stuff. And it's the kind of stuff that I really like to see from Star Wars, more grounded kind of war type of stuff. And the sacrifice felt a lot like a war sacrifice, you know what I mean? I really like whenever Star Wars dives deeper into uh, the war. That's why Rogue One is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, I'm not sure yet, Star Wars movie. And that's why I'm really happy to see Andor, because I think we're going to see a lot of that grounded war stuff. And I think this really showed that and really portrayed that. And I'd love to see it. You know, I'd really love to see it. Every time Star Wars dives a little bit more into kind of like the war elements, including terror sacrifice in this scene, I thought it would, I thought it, I think it, it really hits um, the peak Star Wars in my opinion. So yeah, I really like the scene for that reason. It hit those war elements really, really well. Now moving on to now, my number six spot, that is going to be Qui-Gon's Force Ghost of Yours. And this is basically the perfect way to end Obi-Wan. It was like the perfect golden, like a uh, golden knot that people say to end Obi-Wan. I thought it was really good to see Qui-Gon's Force Ghost, like super, super cool, super, super awesome. Uh, I, honestly, it was like a super small cameo, like Leon Nielsen was barely on screen, but I thought it was cool. I, like, honestly, I really enjoyed that. I thought it hit emotionally. I think it really did hit. I wish it would have been a longer scene, maybe, perhaps. But I don't feel like it's going to be the last time we're going to see him. I really think that we're going to get a Obi-Wan season 2. So I really do think that we're going to see him together again. I think it's going to be even better. But for the ending of this season, I thought it was super cool. It's a little bit low at like, number 6, just because it was really, really short. Like, it was a super short scene. But besides that, I think it was a perfect ending to Obi-Wan. And I think it really, really hit where it had to. So yeah, that's great for that scene. Now I'm going on to number 5th spot. And that is going to be the flashback of Anakin and Obi-Wan training. And oh my god, was this scene everything I wanted. First of all, we all we were expecting a flashback. Like we everybody wanted a flashback between Anakin and Obi Wan, and I think this really hits. Uh, sure, it wasn't a Clone Wars flashback, which I kind of wish we would have gotten, but I feel like we're gonna get that in Ahsoka show anyway, so I, I'm okay with that. But a flashback between Anakin and Obi Wan joining was super super cool, and it was even cooler the way that it was done, like the way that the episode worked, where it was like. It was like the training thing, and we went back to like, oh, this is the actual episode, like the how they were like layering them and like backing them up and everything. Then we go back to the training and this and that. And I really like the way that the training kind of worked with that with the strategies that Obi Wan and Darth Vader were using along the episode. So that training scene wasn't just like, oh, this is fan service, but it was also like, oh, this fits the story very nicely narratively, and I really really like that. Besides that, it was just super cool to see Hayden Christensen back as Anakin. That it was super awesome. I was like, let's go, and I like to see that banter between Master and. Um, student again and I like to see how Obi Wan kind of teaches Anakin how to be a Jedi and I, from that moment on you can definitely see where Anakin's spots are like he wants to win no matter what and I, I also thought the lightsaber battle itself was pretty good I was like this is a pretty good lightsaber battle so yeah I thought it was a great scene I, I think it hit the nostalgia factor very well to be honest so yeah great scene I really liked it now we're on to my number fourth spot and that is going to be whenever Owen tells Owen that he can meet Luke and this scene it was so good it hit like super um nicely the the emotion part like it really felt like satisfying and they really wrapped up this kind of like kind of tension really well i thought i really liked it because all when all we want have had really this really like intense tension and here whenever he finally kind of lets his guard down a little bit he lets him meet luke it was just a super cool scene besides that uh whenever everyone walks up to luke and says hello there i mean come on he said hello there hello there the iconic hello there like i was literally freaking out when i saw that it was super awesome i thought it really hit well and luke uh really kind of captured this kid luke really kind of captured the magic of luke from the original trilogy so raw i just really thought that this scene worked in other ways i thought it hit the nostalgia factor and i thought it wrapped up like this kind of like story thread that the season had going on really really well and really satisfyingly all right, now moving on to my third spot, and that is going to be Reva versus Darth Vader. Plus, whenever Vader holds the ship and kind of breaks it. So first of all, let's start with that scene. And for, uh, well, it's the same scene, but it's kind of like two different things, but the same scene. So first of all, Vader like goes in and like he's trying to stop Kenobi from escaping. And he sees like the ship uh, start flying, and then like he holds it, like he literally go, grabs the ship, holds it with the force, and just like pulls it back, which is such a cool scene because it's like a super massive ship. And Vader barely looked like he was struggling, like he literally didn't struggle at all. He literally put it to the ground and then just started breaking it, tearing it apart like he literally tore it apart and so he realized that nobody was there and then oh and escaped in a little bit smaller ship um which was a super cool thing he got really got played by that i was like okay that's super cool from obi one but Vader really showed how powerful he was there with the force like he was really really strong like i was like whoa Vader is not to mess around with so first of all that really gave like 
points for the Vader, like really nice points. I was like, that's super, super awesome. And that's such a cool scene. Like every fan was fan, uh, fan freaking during that moment. Like everybody was freaking out whenever they saw that Vader hold that ship, right? I, and I was freaking out. And then, like I said, to make it matter, even better for Vader, he just tore it apart. Like I was like, oh my God, he is so awesome and so incredible. And the tension was there because, you know, Obi-Wan, we all thought Obi-Wan was there too. And I was like, oh my God, the tension's right there. It's the Obi-Wan there, you know, the tension was there. So yeah, that was super awesome. But then Reba comes in and tries to betray Dark Vader, obviously because um, of, what he, of what he did to young Lance. And after that, first of all, she has really amazing motivation. The motivation they gave her is very understandable. And I was like, let's go. But I said, damn, it's Dark Vader. Come on. We all know he, that, that wasn't going to work out. But we want to see how it was going to go down. And it went down amazing. First of all, Dark Vader was like completely humbling her with just the force. Riva was trying her best, screaming and everything. You could really feel the rage of Riva. Once again, thanks to, to the amazing acting that uh, uh, Moses Ingram really did for the character. I thought she did an amazing job um, portraying that kind of anger in her while fighting Darth Vader whenever she was screaming and everything. I thought it was super awesome. But Darth Vader, like, he could care less, bro. He literally, he was just, like, grabbing the lightsaber with the force. Whenever she was doing the spinning thing with the lightsaber, he stopped it and everything. And then he took the lightsaber, and then he was, and then he literally, like, tore it apart. He had two lightsabers, first of all, which was such an Ahsoka moment. I was like, oh my god, that's an Ahsoka move. Oh my god, he really is, like, the master of Ahsoka. Like, they're so connected, and I love that. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. But I was really freaking out, because Ahsoka is one of my, if not my favorite Star Wars characters. So, yeah, I was like, oh my god, that's such an Ahsoka thing whenever their videos went to lightsabers that was super awesome and then whenever he gave one to to um reba to for them to fight and duel that was super awesome they had a really cool fight obviously their video was winning by far and uh, whenever like he threw lightsaber and like he grabbed mo uh, reba's lightsaber and then he brought his back like i said such a ahsoka moment because that's such an ahsoka move that like, really is an ahsoka move and then whenever he finally stabs um reba and they kind of flash rest and forward between like back and then whenever hitting Christensen uh as Anakin was stabbing her as a little kid to now and he was like did you really think I'm gonna see it coming that was super awesome that was super cool I was like oh my god that's so awesome that's so cool um I was really I really liked that scene it was really intense I really liked how it flashed back and forward between the Order 66 Anakin and then Darth Vader now I really liked the comparison and overall I thought that was such an amazing amazing scene and I was like this is really really good so yeah that all that did amazing amazing stuff the duo was great Darth Vader kind of showing how strong he is with the ship was awesome and in general I just really thought that was um really well done and also just a soccer reference I was very happy with that too come on the soccer reference come on why couldn't you be happy so yeah now we're going to my number second slot and that's going to be whenever Owen tells Leah about her parents and then he finally comes in to like to to kind of say goodbye to Leah and then like he tells her that he was lying about not knowing her parents like he doesn't know her parents and then he told her about how um, she has these qualities from her mother and then she, how he has these qualities from her father. I thought it worked really, really well. I thought that scene was really emotional, first of all speaking, because we know these two characters, Anakin and Padme, and the way that he still expresses himself from Anakin and Padme, you can definitely see like the love that they, that uh, Obi-Wan has towards both of these characters is such an amazing thing, especially towards Anakin. I really love that. I really thought that was an amazing stuff. And then, like, you, you really kind of give Leia a little bit of closure. And also, it's really interesting to see how he sees Leia and how he sees her parents in Leia. You know what I mean? I think that's super awesome. And overall, I, I think, like I said, it really wrapped up this story arc, emotionally speaking, very well. And I think it was an amazing thing to put in the finale. And Apart from that, it really is a nice way to continue the legacy of Padme and Anakin through Leia. I think many people don't see that. I think mostly we always see, oh, Luke is continuing the Anakin legacy. But now we're starting to see how Leia continued the Padme and Anakin legacy as well. So I think that's really awesome. I really thought that the quietest I like could describe as well. I never really thought of it that way. Like, for example, uh, you get, like, your determination or, like, the, whatever... Um, Obi-Wan said it from Anakin. I was like, oh yeah, she does get that from Anakin. She really is like Anakin in that way. And all that type of stuff, it really got me thinking. And I was like, okay, that's that, that's really awesome. So yeah, I really like the way that it, kind of like the legacy continues to live on through Leia. All right, number one to my number one spot. And obviously, how could this not be my number one spot? Darth Vader versus um, Kenobi rematch. Obviously, how can that be my number one spot? Highlights of this fight, uh, whenever he's like, how you come here to kill me? And he's like, I must... Uh, I would do what I must, and he, he makes that iconic pose. Come on, that's super awesome. Uh, the Kenobi stance, basically. Then Vader and Kenobi lightsaber fight, especially like in that beautiful planet with the beautiful background. That was super, super awesome. Then Vader catches Kenobi's forces whenever Kenobi's kind of throwing like the mountain on him, and then he just like uh, grabs it, kind of like throws it back. Super awesome stuff. Then whenever Vader breaks the floor, you know, with the lightsaber, he like slashes the the, the the floor with his lightsaber and it kind of cracks. And then he he finally puts his hand with the full force and breaks it. And I thought it was super, super cool. Kind of reminded me of Fast and Furious 7, I think, a little bit. But I don't know if it's just me, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of that. But yeah, that was super, super cool. And then like going on Foss, and then like he grabs pieces of like the thing and just starts burying Kenobi. Come on, that was super awesome stuff. Like that was super, super awesome. Then whenever Kenobi's like 
trying to, uh, is like struggling to hold it and like he kind of remembers what he's fighting for you know leia luke that's his legacy that's that's the legacy he's trying to fight for these two kids center him, to him so much and then he finally tears apart that's super awesome he, he does it with ease he just like mm. he comes out and he comes here to not play then whenever obi-wan like starts lifting all the rocks and he's holding his hands like this that was such a boss moment. I was like, oh my god, that's Obi-Wan. That is Obi-Wan. You know, that's Kenobi. And he, like, starts throwing it to Darth Vader. Come on. That's super awesome stuff. That's super awesome stuff. Then whenever they fight, they start lightsaber bat battle again. And, then, like, he, he breaks the thing right here. And then, like, slashes him in the back. That's so awesome. To whenever he finally cracks the mask open. And it's, like, Anakin under it. Like, that's so awesome. That's really cool stuff. Come on. You can't tell like to me. That's really awesome stuff. I love that. Love that. Obviously, it's like a huge, like, kind of, like, Rebels kind of reference, ripoff, whatever you want to call it, versus Ahsoka and Darth Vader. But, like I said, me, Ahsoka be one of my favorite characters. The way that they kind of reference that is such a cool way, to be honest. I really love that. And the way that they kind of both get to see Anakin in a sort of way, because they were both the, somewhat the closest people that he had, along with Padme, is super, super awesome. I really love that. And I really like whenever, uh, whenever Obi Wan's really trying to apologize. He feels the guilt. He's like, I'm sorry, Anakin, for all of it. And he's like, you didn't kill, um, Oh, Anakin, I did, you know, that he looked truly evil. That was awesome. And also, the, I like the way that the, the scene was directed. Whenever you see, like, the blue lightsaber light on his face, that's whenever, like, the, he's still kind of, like, not fully consumed by evil. Then, as the scene starts going on, he starts getting, like, his uh, kind of, like, half of his head lighted by full on red from his lightsaber, which is, like, kind of a representation of whenever he's, like, truly evil, he's truly gone. That's super awesome directed. Come on, that's super awesome stuff. Therefore, a child deserves some credit for that because she did an amazing job directing that. I think that's really awesome stuff. And then, like, Darth Vader is screaming, Kenobi! I mean, no, he's screaming, Obi-Wan, because Kenobi is Dark Maul. Um, uh, Darth Vader screaming, oh, Obi-Wan! Obi-Wan, come on, that was super awesome. And the voice change between uh, Hayden Christensen and, and Darth Vader's voice, come on, that's super awesome. That's so cool. Uh, so yeah, overall, I thought that scene was just incredible. It delivered for sure. It's such an amazing duel. And they all had their cool moments, both Darth Vader and Obi-Wan. And once again, we see who is like the true master, who is the best of the best. Kenobi, come on, he's the GOAT. So yeah, that I really love that scene. So yeah, that was my top 10. This was the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Tell me what you thought about it down in the comments. What is your top 10? At least give me your top 3 or your top 1. Please, I want to hear your own thoughts on the comments to me that down in the comments i'm very very curious as well as just leave a like if you enjoyed this video it will be very very helpful so please leave a like and subscribe for a lot more content star wars marvel dc um all that type of stuff just subscribe for all the content movies reviews box office all that type of stuff subscribe for all that content and yeah that'll be it for this video thanks for watching hope you have a great rest of your day and this is jerry entertainment out